After four months of being in the Northeast, it is finally time for us to head back down south. Because as you can see around me, the leaves are starting to change and RV life not chasing good weather is kind of a no-go. But what that means is we have a three day, 800 mile trip ahead of us. And to be honest, this is probably our least favorite part about RV life all the time on the road. But it's always an adventure, so come along with us. We are headed to Roanoke, West Virginia, and it is going to be both of our, all three of our first times in visiting West Virginia, so that'll be kind of cool. Well, technically we have enough fuel in the tank to get the entire way, but maybe Dash is gonna be hungry at some point, so we'll have to stop. Hopefully a rest area along the main highway, but as always, we shall see. We're about an hour into our drive, and maybe five minutes into it, I was like, mm, I'm hungry. I think that's crazy. So we could do the mature thing, find a gas station, I could go in the back, make something to eat, but we've decided what we really want to do is go to Taco Bell. <laughs> so I have done a little bit of Google uh, searching and I think I found a Taco Bell that is going to be semi-reasonable for us to get in and out of. It's right across the street, it's perfect for parking. I could probably make that. It's a double lane. Okay. Now, I'm gonna make it right here with double lanes. Turn left, then take the third left. It's quite the detour for some tacos, I'm just saying. Okay, Taco Bell plan got an upgrade because this restaurant, we can actually park the Airstream and apparently they have veggie burgers. So no, this isn't shopping local. Cause I'm pretty sure Red Robin is chain. I haven't been here in ages, but sometimes when you're towing, the number one thing is that you just simply have to find somewhere you can actually park to stop. Yay, travel days. We've covered so much so far. We've covered an hour of travel and we have three and a half hours to go. So we are still just getting started and we've already stopped. <laughs> right, I know, right? Like smart people would have just eaten before we left. <laughs> this is an honest review. I've never been to Red Robin. I don't know if you had, if you had, leave a comment below, but um, you know, a lot of food. like. I think finishing this is going to be impossible. But uh, some strawberry lemonade, pretty good. Honestly, overall, three out of five flamingos. Not bad, better than Taco Bell. Overall, like Daniel said, three out of five flamingos, not local, so the quality isn't what we usually look for, but it definitely beat Taco Bell. Well, the one thing I will say is that I think one of the things Daniel and I have a hard time with is figuring out how to make travel days fun. Like, we, when you have an RV attached to your truck, aka 30 feet in addition, it's just hard to find places to park. And figuring out things to like, or where you can stop to make things fun is hard. So if you figured that out, leave a comment below. We would love tips because travel days are kind of lame. Yeah. Time to bust a move. Yeah, a semi truck came through here, and then all of a sudden there was just like smoke pouring out everywhere. And then I saw the guys trying to pull this. Oh, they're looking at it like something got messed up. I think that highway tarp came down and blanketed that fuel truck in front of us, and the fuel truck locked up his brakes. I think that's probably what it was, because I could see smoke billowing from the wheel wells you can smell it now the rubber yeah so i think the highway tarp came off the highway where the guys were doing construction and just completely covered the semi truck we're good we made it to west virginia time for another pit stop Okay, so I went to the bathroom and this is what I came back out to. Oh, 
yeah. Hey guys. Yeah. Somebody has tasted like two or three leaves because I wasn't watching carefully. He just goes <laughs> and he's picking at the grass, right? He's having so much fun. Yeah, you're digging this, aren't you? <laughs> Look. <laughs> you're loving this. New textures. Just when I was saying that we don't know how to make travel days fun. I don't know if they treat them with chemicals or stuff. Whoa, no, don't eat that one. <laughs> there might be stuff on these leaves. Okay, ready? Yeah, let's do this. Here's a little update. It is 4.07. Um, this is around the time we thought we'd be getting there originally, but it just goes to show you that you're definitely always going to have pit stops along the way. But... Our new arrival time is about 5.30. So overall, if we just continue on our trajectory, we'll arrive about an hour and 20 minutes after we expected to, which is expected, considering you're gonna stop for lunch and stuff. So, so far, nothing too crazy. Knock on wood and whatever this truck is made of. And we're gonna continue on with our journey. Neighbors. So I bought the cheapest planetoid I could all right we just got set up at our campground here in west virginia and this was worth the drive we think it's awesome here right dash what's the name of this place be? the cool best mm. campground Okay, tell me this, how many nights are we here for? A few. More than one and less than a hundred. How, how many nights do you wish we were here? Uh, easily a solid week, but I know we're not going to be here for a week. Yeah, this is... There's only a handful of campsites here um, in total, but there's only a few that kind of lie in this rim here by the water, overlooking the water here. And these are the prized spots, no doubt. Pretty legit. Yeah. The campground is called Stonewall Resort. Or it's the campground at Stonewall Resort. And we're here for two nights. Okay, nice. Before we head to Kentucky and then Tennessee, which is our final destination. Yeah. But this place. It's one of our favorites. Easily. We could stay for a while. It's beautiful. Yeah, definitely. This is got to be one of the best ones we've been to. Travel day number two on our trip to Tennessee. Thankfully, we have had a couple of days to rest here in West Virginia, and it's been beautiful. We've basically just got a bunch of work done and haven't really explored much, so we'll have to come back to West Virginia in the future for sure. But we're basically packed up, which is a big win. And I also figured out that while I was packing up the Airstream this morning, Putting baby Dash in a baby carrier actually works really well to get this done faster. So we're actually leaving on time. Well, it's 10.59 and our checkout is at 11. So we're gonna be like five minutes late. For us, it's basically on time. But y'all, you have to see how disgusting the Airstream is right now. Because when I'm honest with myself, usually this is what it looks like before we, or when we're leaving, and I don't clean it until after we get to the next campground. Look at all these leaves. Yeah, like seriously, all of them. That's just kind of part of the reality of running in and out to prep the Airstream to move. Okay, one last look at how pretty West Virginia is. Like usual, we're late. We almost did it. It is exactly 11.01 right now. Um, just have to put up the steps, lock the doors, do a light check, and then we're ready to head out. So all in all, just a few minutes late, that's pretty much a record for us. Dude, you ready to travel? Are you excited? We're going to Tennessee? Yeah, that's fun. All right, we're making some pretty good progress. We uh, countered some, some construction. I can show you some of that footage where I know if you drive uh, the country like we do, 
you're always gonna encounter some uh, construction, but like when they put the barricades on the lines, uh, it makes it so snug. And um, you know, you end up white knuckling the steering wheel. And it doesn't matter how long you've been driving or how many miles you've covered, it's always a little bit nerve wracking when you're going through curves and the, the concrete barricades are on both sides of you. D, so, do you have any tips though for driving through construction? Cause I feel like we've done this a lot and you gave me some really good tips when I first started driving. I do, yeah. So if the barricade is on the left, then you can kind of cheat a little bit to the right side always. If the barricade's on the right, you cheat a little bit to the left because cars can always go around you a lot. You can essentially, they can essentially move around you a lot easier than you can move around them. So you can kind of cheat to either side, but when the barricades are on both sides, you just try to like keep it right down the middle. Um, when you're making, just remember when you're making turns in those tight barricades, your right side can tend to cut the corners. So you want to kind of take the outer edges when the barricades curve to the right um, or to the left, you know. Just make sure when you have it like really snug in there, you're not cutting too sharp because it'd be very, very easy to sideswipe one of those uh, those, you know, concrete barricades. So beyond that though, the drive has been relatively smooth. It's wide open countryside. So, I mean, honestly, can't really complain. It's not as stressful as driving through traffic. Driving through traffic is so much more stressful and, and draining uh, on your mind. So you can go a lot longer, I feel, when there's just like wide open roads than you can when there's just like high traffic areas. Um, whenever it's congested, you obviously have to be more focused and, you know, it, it's, you know, obviously just, a lot more draining. So, um, so far, great weather, uh, knock on wood, no rain or anything like that. Um, beautiful skies, wide open roads, and can't really complain. So we are about two hours out from our destination in Kentucky, where we'll camp for the night. And it's time to continue on with this journey. Let's do it. <laughs> Let's do this. So good news, we made it to the campground in time to get propane. It was a really big deal because it's starting to get colder out here. And last night we had to turn, we were using the electric because we can use the electric, but it got too cold outside. And so I had to turn on the very end of our propane last night because this little guy was getting cold, which is not cool. So thankfully campground got propane and we're all set for tonight. You excited to be here, dude? Are you so over all the driving? Yeah, 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 yeah. We made it! Yay! <laughs> what do you think? Now that we set up the Airstream, should we relax and start a fire and do camper type things? I think after a approximately seven hour drive, it is time for some food and an ice cold beer. Well, and if you've never done a long RV trip like this, the reality is, is we have to get gas. So that means we have to unhook because in order to drive tomorrow, requirement and then we've got to come back set up ba baby dash's bed like there's nothing really relaxing about yeah. this kind of travel at all no it's fast moving fast covering a lot of mileage um but tonight we're hooked up we're unhooked unhooked our brain doesn't work anymore um i did find a saying? local pizza shop so <laughs> cool. we're gonna go explore there grab some grub get some gas come back and well crash we're below quarter tank right now. So we have roughly 70 or so miles left in the gas tank. This is way lower than I like to run it. Um, I typically like to go from point A to point B without having to stop at a gas station. I have no fear of driving to gas stations with the Airstream, but it's just easier to not have to stop. Um, but it, it got me thinking today. I'm very much want to get an expansion tank for the Ford. And what that would allow me to do is that would allow me to cover a distance of you know, upwards of 900 miles without having to refill. So on days like today where we have to cover, we're driving essentially for 
seven or so hours, uh, you're covering a lot of mileage and it's typically hard to cover that entire distance without having to stop at a gas station. Um, when you hit these rural areas, it's you should never assume that there's a gas station close by uh, to the campground because sometimes some of the best campgrounds in the country are in very, very remote areas. Um, a good example of that is you know, we stayed an alpaca farm a little over a year ago and it was an hour to the closest town. So if you can imagine if we had gotten to that campground that, or that alpaca farm with, you know, 50 miles in the gas tank, it would have been a little sketchy driving an hour uh, to find, you know, a gas station. So the moral story is, one, I want an expansion tank for the Ford, so I never have to worry about that again. But two, uh, just be cognizant of your, you know, uh, your gas tank and know that, you know, having a gas station close to the campground is not a guarantee. Now, when you're wandering local, one of my favorite things to do is to drink local. And this is a local beer. It's a white ale and it is delicious. Yeah, I'm not exactly sure where the brewery is, but it's local. Not made that far. I think uh, she said Lexington. So, but yum. So wherever the brewery is on this one, kudos to you. Four out of five flamingos. Pizza is delicious, and as you can see, we've done some serious damage because the only thing we've actually eaten all day is a egg burrito that I made at the beginning of the day. That's just kind of how things go on a travel day. We're starving. Time to head home. Travel day number three, and we are finally getting to our destination in Nashville. We have an approximately three hour drive, give or take, since we're right outside of Lexington, Lexington, <laughs> Lexington, Kentucky, and we are going just north of Nashville to one of our favorite RV parks, the Grand Ole RV Park. So yeah, we're super ready. Technically, we don't even have to get out of this campground until noon, but we're so pumped about getting to Nashville. It is 1034 and we are almost packed up. But seriously, I have to show y'all how big Dash is getting. Dude, it does not look like you are going to fit in there very much longer. No. Do you fit in there now? <laughs> no, not really. Sam, too big. Good news. We have a new baby bed for Dash in Nashville. One of the things that we do as far as like getting packages shipped to us, especially like big stuff, is we plan for things to be either in Nashville where my mom is or in Florida where my dad is. And that usually works out pretty good, but it means we do run into an issue every once in a while that we need something a little bit sooner. I don't know about you, but I think this is probably a pretty good example of that. Dude, seriously, you don't fit in here anymore. Hey. <laughs> One more really good tip that will save you a total mess is once the water is disconnected, I always make sure that I let the rest of it blow out because if you don't do this, if your sink um, knob or anywhere comes loose while you're traveling, all that water that just went into the sink, well, it ends up all over your kitchen, which is kind of lame depending on how much water is in there, it's a thing. And I already brushed my teeth with part of it. So just a 411 for those newbie RVers out there, make sure you in, you'd empty the water that's in the pipes after you disconnect the water. If you're traveling on holidays and get a bit crowded at the campgrounds, and not just because you've got the campers, but because you potentially have friends of campers, family of campers. So there tends to be a lot more cars than usual, which can make backing in and getting out of a camp spot a little bit more challenging. So keep that in mind. You know, obviously if you're coming on a holiday, the best thing to do is try to come before the mad rush because you know your Fridays are typically the mad rush or everybody's trying to get into the campsite. And then everybody's trying to typically leave on a Sunday or potentially on a Monday, depending on where the holiday falls. So if you can leave 
and arrive to your campsite before the holiday. And if you can buy a little extra time, leave a little bit after the holiday to make getting in and getting out of your campsite as easy as possible. But in rare instances where like us today, we have to leave and it's on a Saturday and this is a holiday weekend. Um, it takes a little bit of wiggling to get out. So what we've done is we've, I've moved the, the table out next to our Airstream and our neighbors were so kind to move their truck. Don't be afraid to ask your neighbors if, uh, if they can move their truck, if it's in the way. Uh, everybody's dealing with the exact same thing. So, you know, everybody's out to help each other. So again, just don't be afraid to go knock on your neighbor's door and say, would you please so kindly move your truck so I can get out or back in? Um, we're all in this together. Just remember that. Testing. <laughs> Testing. Back her up. Mm -hmm. All right, you got tons of space, so take what you need. Yeah, keep her coming. Ah! All right, it's gonna start dipping in a hot minute. Then. <laughs> Skills, boo. And just like that, we're off to our final destination and my hometown of Nashville, Tennessee. If you've enjoyed this video, make sure to give it a thumbs up and leave a comment with your favorite RV travel day tip. We are all ears. Oh, and of course, if you haven't joined our YouTube family yet, make sure to subscribe to our channel and hit that little bell so you'll get notified when the next video comes out. It's going to be all about modifications we've made to our rig lately that we love. But until then, my friend, make sure to get out there and wander local this week. Trust me, it's good for the soul. <laughs>